To our next guest, Ron's going to show everybody something really quick. I'm going to show you what a dear friend of ours did for us as a gift. Her name is Alga, and she's a portrait painter. And I want you to get a load of this. Can I see that or no? Can you see this? Go or down, go down, go down. There you go. There you go. That's Jimmy Starr. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> go to the next one. And she did one of. It looks me. like Hemingway. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of me. You got to like love it, you guys. And it's all over our social media, you guys. So check it out. It's all over our social media. So if you want a portrait done to look like yourself, go to Olga. She's the bestest. Olga Perry. There you go. It was a great gift. So now, you guys, we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented Patrick Kilpatrick. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Nice to be with you. Boy, you're looking like you're in a sunny, beachy kind of environment. We're in Palm Springs. And this is our house. There you go. And there you our, go. That's our patio. We've had such a cold winter that I thought today being back, it's back to 80 again. I thought, let's do it right by the doors that go out to the patio. So let me introduce you to everybody, starting off with my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Hi, are you going to kill me? <laughs> are you going to be what real mean? Me? Come, are you, you going to, like, <laughs> knock me off, shoot me up, kill me? What, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> You mean you know, son of a bitch. Yeah, that's intriguing. That's intriguing. Yeah, sure. Maybe we could do that later on. You're yeah, such a mean son that. of a bitch. I mean, really, <laughs> if I ever see you, I'm going to, like, have you arrested. <laughs> then Dude, we... I would elevate the PR <laughs> profile. Wow. Right, to yes. Me. For being mean. Everybody <laughs> out there, you know this guy. You know this guy. You see him in a ton of movies, and he's a real mean motherfucker. Only on TV, because look at he's so nice here. Hold on, we got to finish introducing you. We've got our, our uh, engineers. We've got one in Pennsylvania. Hang on, airplane. That's okay. We have one in Pennsylvania <laughs> and one in Florida. We have D and D and Scott. So say hi to D and Scott. There we go. Hey, Mr. Kilpatrick. Love your work. Oh, thank you very much. You're in Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Just outside Philly. Yeah, I have a lot of friends there. I, I, I've taught acting and writing and directing and producing at uh, Edinburgh University. Yes, sir. Uh, and so uh, I have a lot of friends there. What a great state. It's a beautiful state. Uh, beautiful. And then we've got D. D. say hi real quick. Where'd she go? She probably went to Master. All right, well, she'll be back. <laughs> then we have a chat room with every country possible. What a crazy show. Wait. Oh, there she is. There she is. Hey, hey, D, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, D. Hi. <laughs> then we have a chat room with every country. We have, we have Can we have Canada. We have Estonia, Belgium, uh, France. I don't know every country possible in the chat room. So just say hi to everybody in the chat room, and we'll start talking. And four and a half Hello, million people all watching. You there you go. So everybody, you can follow Patrick Kilpatrick on Twitter. He's I'm Pat Kilpatrick. Um, you guys know him from movies such as Minority Report, Eraser. I like Remo Williams, so I have to bring up Remo Williams. The Presidio, uh, Blackwater. He's always in like a lot of like he, he plays the bad guy. He's one of, probably like one of the most well-known bad villain guys like on film. And I'm so happy to see he smiles and everything, and he's not uh, totally like that in real life. And he did, we're also going to talk because he has a new book called Dying for Living: Sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot. That's the title of the yeah, whole fucking book. that's the title book. of the book. I thought it was <laughs> the book. Sins, sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot is the subhead. The uh, name of the book is Dying for Living. But, um, it's you know, handsome, the is handsome, the handsome, handsome. Move it over a little. We only have that's, half uh, your face. No, wait. We only wait, have, wait, have, we have half of your, your face. Little. Move your camera over. There you go. Uh, there you go. There you go. Now we can really be terrified. <laughs> we got you full face. Um, so I want to ask, because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Best of the Best series, the whole series, and since you're in one of them. Uh, yeah. First of all, are you like a, did you like learn like martial arts and stuff like gr uh, growing up or something to be so good at it? Well, I was very physical. I played basketball, baseball, football, wrestling horseback riding, Red Cross swimming, lifeguard, all of that stuff. But So when you get a movie part, you learn whatever physical business or verbal business there is, like whether it's a dialect or um, – but the, the martial arts stuff, I call it movie black belt because you, 
if you're doing boxing, you study boxing for a while. If you're doing jujitsu, you study that. And then you, it's kind of like dance choreography. You, you put it together through the numbers very quickly, uh, often with a stunt coordinator. And then you, uh, I, I'm blessed. I have a somewhat of a photographic memory, both for, um, you know, for dialogue as well as for movement cues. And then you, you just do it. I mean, uh, when we started out, it, you had the luxury of time. As, as time has gone on, you do things faster and faster and faster. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I would say that your face would be like a gay icon. I could see all the queens going crazy for your face because it's a gay man's a dream face. If you see the cartoons they draw about gay men, they all look like you. You have that real butch face. <laughs> and with all the, the shit that you've done, you're a real butch guy. Now, tell me, have you ever won, like, the Lavender Glove Award or the Gold <laughs> yeah, Tiara right. Award? Because there's a joke. No, you know, I, I started out in the New York theater, which is, I would say, predominantly, uh, got a, has a lot of homosexuals in it. And, gay um, for days, darling, gay for days. <laughs> yeah, and I, um, I, I, I really found the world really enthralling and colorful. And, you know, it's nowadays in the Me Too movement and all this other stuff, there it's unfortunate. It'd be interesting to find out if they still function that way because it's very body and it's very sexual innuendo. And I, uh, I found it really funny. Um, I've never won those awards. I, I played some gay characters. I played, but it's always against type. It's like uh, gay uh, homicidal Navy SEAL. <laughs> so they never they never asked you to impersonate Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> no, I've done a few in that uh, particular movie. I ended up sort of in drag, but um, oh, I got to uh, see you in drag. That's wait, what be movie is one that? Ugly broad. <laughs> you got to be one That's ugly a, broad. A movie called uh, Palmer's Pickup, directed by Christopher Coppola. Uh, Francis Ford's nephew and nephew. Nick Cage's uh, brother. Um, a really interesting, fun film. Um, yeah, oh my but God, you, I you see have that. to be one ugly broad. There's no way that handsome, manly face could look like a chick. I don't give a <laughs> yeah, shit how much was Hollywood. Pretty, it, was, it, it was pretty grotesque. Um, yeah. So, uh, but that was the humor of it. Um, it must have looked like a killer dyke. <laughs> Well, I ended up in a shower cap and some sort of plastic <laughs> outfit. I forget what it was, but um, uh, it was fun to do those things. It's always fun to sort of. It has to be hysterical. Stuff. Yeah, because you're you're what they call a man's man. You're all man. That's why I said the queens must be fainting that are watching this show. No, seriously, when they draw. Well, you're you're, you're bringing up the archetype of a homosexuals wanting a man man's man or a virginal man in a homosexual sense or all of that stuff. Oh, gay, gay I men. think a lot of those things are very illusionary, you know, um, in the human consciousness. But um, I... Uh, Jimmy and I yeah, are I gay. We're fun. married. So I, I don't know if you know that. Jimmy and I are married. Legally, we're gay. But gay guys don't like pretty men. They like manly men looking faces and you have an absolute you could play a gladiator tomorrow and clean up i mean you look like a roman or a greek gladiator more so than a killer i mean you do look like a killer when you work but <laughs> now well, you look when more i like played a good guy like on deep space nine or something yeah i'm always killing somebody whether i'm on the good side or the bad side um, right. does that bother uh, you? does that bother you uh no, it's been rich acting territory a lot. I, I, I think um, uh, you, you're looking for nuanced, challenging characters. Rather, I don't care whether they're the antagonist or the protagonist. Although there's some economic disparity between the front guy and the, and the supporting players, um, and I think sometimes that's a little excessive. But um, uh, no. No, I, you know, I, I like, uh, I just played a good border patrol guy, the lead in a film called uh, The Grand Inquisitor. And, you know, that was, he was rough and tumble, but he was a good guy. Um, so uh, whether it's a, a clear monster or a, a, a 
a hero who's flawed or whatever. I don't care. It's like people ask me, do you prefer sci-fi to westerns or war movies? Or I, I it's all acting. To me. Yeah, it's all acting. I, mean, I, I actually, feel, I, like, I feel the same way too. I know you've done all these like really huge films, um, but I actually like. Uh, I actually like some of the smaller things, like I said, best of the best, and like the substitute uh, when you did the substitute film with Treat Williams, yeah, you know, like because yeah, I've seen all of those. And the Free Willy, Free Willy, you were awesome in Free Willy. I hated you, which means you're a really good actor because <laughs> you were like. There you go. Well, if, did I manage to arouse you at all too uh, at the same time? Because that's that's a good thing we try and do with villains. And he, that Free Willy guy, was actually he was just. You know, look, it, it kind of uh, our our conversation we're having as Americans is always challenging who we think we are and all of that. And that was a guy who was he had been a whaler and a whaler was a, an admirable, notable uh, force of society. For yes. Many, many generations. Yes. And then all, all of a sudden you're the it bad. Was bad. Right. Yeah. So uh, I think all of us on a daily basis face things like that. Oh, uh, I think so, too. Things, yeah, I mean, I, I talk about a lot about the, uh, my upbringing. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant were on a par. They were both admirable people. Now, Robert E. Lee and uh, all of those people are under assault. And you get it. You understand. But it's kind of looking back at our history. We're all sort of evolving every every second that we go. Um, so that's actually, one of the foundations of the book. I went to Robert E. Lee High School, actually. So where are you actually from? I was born in Virginia and raised in Connecticut and Virginia back and forth. Uh, I graduated from University of Richmond, but I went to NYU for film and videotape. Uh, I had the New England experience and the, the Virginia experience. So I was okay, again, lucky. I have to interrupt you. Could you move your cam? Stop jingling the camera before I punch the shit out of you. <laughs> All right, there you go. No, I want your full face, not go your hair. A little bit face. more, a little more. A little more, a little more. I don't have my glasses on. Let me see what I'm, uh, <laughs> what I'm missing here. How's there that? Hey, 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 there hey. you are. You were like in pieces. So I'm going to bring up another film, The Granny. I've never seen it, and I'm using it to help uh, segue into another segment because... We had Sandy Helberg and Stella Stevens on the show, and Stella Stevens uh, is one of Ron's friends. Oh, Jeff, and that segues us into old Hollywood uh, a little bit. You know, sure, I, I sure. love Stella to pieces. Did you love St Do you love Stella? I like her a lot, too, because I've run into her and Nancy Sinatra uh, and people like that who, um, who they're very pro-veteran uh, and pro-wounded warrior. So, um... I've spent time with them at at events, um, um, and I, I appreciate that. I appreciate hence the liberty and pa patriot. Uh, I appreciate people who don't forget that we're Americans and um, our military uh, is serving us. And uh, you, you can disagree about politics, but you need to celebrate the warriors. Absolutely, Stella we is a sweetie, and I'm un I'm sad to say that Stella is having some uh, mentally uh, thinking, or no, well, how am I going to put this nicely? She's ill. She's <laughs> ill. Are you aware of it? Ron, Ron. I want to go I see her. Know. Yeah, she's she's some, she's in a facility now where she's being helped for her memory. Um, I, ha I hope to God it's not all time. Ron used to have a show called Set the Record Straight. It was on Time Warner Cable where he would yeah. interview like the legends of Hollywood, and he was really good friends with Jane Russell, and he interviewed, he was friends with Tab Hunter, and Betty Davis and like all, all the old, all dead. the old classic They're stars. All gone. How, how all wonderful that is! That's a great. I, I, that's I have a I, I have lived a legendary life through my work. Uh, knowing Betty Davis was a trip and a half. Jane Russell was my buddy. We hung out together. Uh, Tab was a dear friend for over forty years. Um, the Hollywood's going. It's almost gone. It's a sin that the new Hollywood doesn't respect the stars the way the old Hollywood did. Uh, the new stars are not legend. They're here today, gone tomorrow. They're actors. Uh, they don't act like stars. They don't act like legends. They act yeah. like ordinary people. That's nice if you want to be down to earth, but that's not what we want. We want stars again. We want the magic. We want the, the mystery, the Hollywood, the glamour, the beauty. 
what you guys were talking before about we talking You're absolutely about, right. It's, yeah. it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, we have we I have, can't I think tell I would, the difference between most of the actors today. Neither can I. <laughs> Neither can and he. You know what? It's all about diversity, and I think that's bullshit. Hollywood today, the awards was putrid because it was pandering and giving away to people that are whatever the bullshit of the politics are. Most of it was to spite Donald Trump, and that's why they were trying to push Roma. Uh, it it the sounds winner. like you read the you read the piece I posted on Facebook the other day about exactly no, I didn't. that. No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Anyway, Hollywood is not. Yeah, listen. My, I'm 78 years old, so my Hollywood is gone. But when I was a young boy, my Hollywood was about glamour, privacy. We never knew what the stars did. Uh, it, we never thought, does Marilyn Monroe pee? No, she doesn't pee or do cocky. She's yeah. Marilyn Monroe. We had that sort of an imagery of all the stars, which made their movies magic because we went to see them. Betty Davis, you know, now Voyager, all her great films. And in real life, Betty Davis said the word fuck every two minutes and drank and smoked like a, like a sailor. I mean, I love Betty. <laughs> Betty was the most outrageous broad in the world. She would tell it like, just like it was. No bullshit with her. She was a, a Republican. She was a rebel. And she was a, a, a Yankee. And she didn't care yeah. what you know, in real life, but on screen, she was quite the lady. You know, why ask for the moon with the stars? I, I mean, when I used to kid her about that, she'd say to me, oh, shut the fuck up. You know, and that was Betty. But nobody knew about it. The world didn't know Betty that way. And Jane, Jane was the absolute the other Republican broad. And Jane was absolutely down to earth. And uh, she'd call herself a cowboy. I love Tab it. Hunter was the best man in the world. The nicest guy, the kindest guy, the most... Honest guy, Tab. I love you, Tab, and all my friends in high. So you knew a lot of the old Hollywood people. Tell though, me right? about it now. Tell me what you thought of my friends. Well, I didn't know all those people. I've read Tab, uh, Tab's uh, biography, and uh, really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, it, for me, it's a privilege to have started out with people like Kenny McMillan and Eli Wallach and, and um, Sean Connery to have worked with Sean Connery and. and um, some of the great visionary directors like Nick Rogue and Guy Hamilton, who did all of the early Bond films. And um, uh, I really enjoyed working with those people and John Tillinger on the stage. And um, uh, God, you know, uh, Tony Richardson, uh, no, no, Vanessa Redgrave's husband, um, to have worked with those people right on through Spielberg and, and those kind of people and his DP Janos Kaminsky. I mean, I've been lucky enough to touch um, uh, that element. And, and, and I completely agree with you that today's Hollywood is not star driven. It's, it's very hard to tell the difference from one leading man to another. They're, uh, they're really fine actors. But um, it doesn't seem like, and that political, uh, it's not even a patina, it, it's obsessive um, uh, political liberalism uh, to the point of lack of common sense that is, is, is really troubling and actually turns America off to the influence of Hollywood. I, I'd Absolutely. say the influence of Hollywood is tremendously diminished now. Absolutely. Um, because, because of the way it's gone in the last several decades. Um, but I've had a, an extraordinary time. Uh, I mentioned Eli. You know, obviously, I love the character actors, and um, I, I, I love the wonderful people that I've worked with, and I've had the privilege of working with a lot of great ones. I mean, I think a guy like Colin Farrell and uh, Tom Cruise are really, really interesting characters. I as an acute observer of psychology, um, I, I think I've been lovingly, ruthlessly uh, candid in the book. And um, uh, Pam Greer, Naomi Watts, um, Jessica Alba, um, I, I've had a good time uh, being a, somewhat of like an embedded journalist, working with them as an actor for 35 years now. So. Let uh, me do a little brag. Yeah, but you're younger than I, so you didn't get the legendary Hollywood, the Hollywood of the 1930s and 40s. No, but, but I'm influenced by it. I'm yeah. heavily influenced by guys 
like Marlon Brando and uh, Bob Mitchum and James oh, Mason. Mitch, Mitch and, was the best. <laughs> Sir James, uh, Sir John Gilgood and um, <clears throat> Olivier and all of those people. Did, did you the know reason. that Robert Mitchum hated acting? <laughs> he only did it for I the money. He couldn't care less. Oh, there we went. I know we didn't go. Oh, maybe Hold he on. hit his button. We'll get you back. He he hit his button. That was him. Okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I mean, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, he was Jane Russell's best actors. friend. He was Jane Russell's best friend, buddy. Jane used to tell me all the time. <laughs> I used to drink Mitch under the table because Mitch could knock him back, baby, like nobody. But my Janie Pooh, she would knock him back with Mitch, and he would love put him on the ground. They were quite a team together. I so miss yesteryear. I so miss it because today it's just so valueless. There's no uh, excitement. There's no thrill. We just came back from the Oscar party, and I said to Jimmy, this is garbage. I felt like I was at a shitty wedding. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 was, it was just crap. There wasn't, you know, where's my Audrey Hepburn, my Grace Kelly, you know, my uh, Robert Taylor. So hang on, hang on. I want to, because I want to do some, I'm going to do a little bragging anyway, for enough you. Enough of my insanity. I want to do some bragging. So everybody, I, I mentioned some of the films Patrick's been in. Here's a very small, short list of some of the people he's worked with. Uh, he mentioned some of them. Colin Farrell, Tom Cruise, Samantha Morton. I love Jessica Alba, Arnold Schwarzenegger, James Coburn, James Kahn, Vanessa Williams, uh, James Cromwell, Meg Ryan, Sean Connery, Mark Harmon, Jean-Claude Van Damme many, many times, Dolph Lundgren a bunch of times, Stacey Keach, Joshua John Miller, he's been on our show, I bring him up, um, Eric Roberts, uh, Stella Stevens, Morris Eric. Chestnut, Steven Seagal a bunch of times, I love him, Catherine Heigl, uh, Nick Mancuso has been on our show, Bruce Willis, Bruce Dern, William Sanderson, Christopher Walken. Chris. Young Fat Chow, Michael Rooker's been on our show, Mira Sorvino, Danny Trejo's been on our show, Cliff and Colin Jr.'s been on our show. I mean, and that's just a very small list of the zillions of movies he's been in, but he's worked with the elite of the elite of Hollywood. That's and that's about it, but not the new Hollywood. This is still this is still old Hollywood, oldish Hollywood. You're old Hollywood. <laughs> no, we're, we're gonna have to put some we're gonna have to put some ether on him. Yes. I mean, he's worked. He's worked here with some fabulous Eric Roberts. Please, Tom Cruise. The, Tom Cruise is not an actor. Yeah. Eric Roberts is an actor. He's wonderful. No, but I, Tom, I, I tell you, Tom is a very dedicated action movie. Um, yeah. He does but, his own stunts, and I did yeah. them with him when we were working together. He's incredibly dedicated to generating a wonderful product and experience with his movies. Yeah, very but it's, it, it's, it's, he's very superficial. He's not an actor as Sean Connery or you. Well, or, or, I, I, I mean, understand. You know what yeah. I mean? He's, 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 he's like cardboard, like comic book. But uh, the, the, you have, you've worked with some of the best actors that we have today in our business. I think he's a business. better comedian than you're giving him. Uh, I, 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 I mean, he's okay, but he's not. I wouldn't put him up there with a legend, okay? Um but He's you, a legend in box office sales. Yeah, but not by the well, uh, all the people that haven't got attention spans and they have to go see a movie that's flying all over the place. <laughs> in my day, we had scripts, we had stories that you had to listen to. It was about humanity, I, about life, I about agree people. With you with large now it's about exploding a helicopter, killing off fifty. So hang on, we've got eight minutes, and I want to talk anyway, about his book. Anyway, I think about. you're wonderful, and wait, I, I want to talk wait, about his wait, book. Wait, wait, I'm going to tune off. I love the people you worked with. Let me say a compliment to you. If you were a shitty actor, you never, ever would have worked with the people you did. So therefore, you are the same quality of those really good actors that you named in, in your resume. I named, yes. Well, Give me name. Thank you very much. I, it's um, true. It's true. You know, they don't put shit with Shinola. Well, and yes, and you have to compete for the things that I do. You know, it's uh, I get offered work uh, often, but it's you. Crap. You still have to compete for it, and and that's a big crucible uh, for continuing to work. Um, I'm excited about a movie I've got coming out called Catalyst, uh, where I play a pedophile priest, and that's uh, oh my god, a, it's interesting fitting. deal. Um, fitting, yeah. Thank you. Um, I. Uh, and then Nightwalk is coming out, uh, which is kind of a Romeo and Juliet thing. But I agree with you about the quality of movies for the business. 
Hollywood is a very grace infused place, but it's also broken on a lot of levels. And, Absolutely. and uh, we talk about that in the book and all the jobs that you've mentioned and all those people, I, I touch upon them, uh, Pam Greer and all of those people in the, in the movie. And uh, it's been a, it's been a rich and colorful life. I just got a script a couple of weeks ago. You're going to crack up where they want me to play a gay priest who uh, molests boys and then kills them. <clears throat> so what is this, the new thing now, pedophile priests? I mean, Jesus Christ, well, where, know, are they, where are they going to go there next? Was, uh, I, I have, you know, I, I started out as a magazine writer, and I, I've been, it's been really sad watching a lot of magazines go the way of the anti Trump bias. But uh, I, um, really fascinating article on New York, in New York Magazine, about how the Roman Catholic Church ended up perhaps 70% gay, and yet is so extremely homophobic, and really fascinating uh, the intricacies of the evolution of all of that. So um, uh, The only time the Vatican much... is homophobic is when the Pope can't get the guy he wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he smiles. So then hold the on. Pope gets hold homophobic. On. Hold on. Let's talk about it real quick. So the name of the book is Dying for Living. The subtitle is Sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot. Uh, where do, they, can get, they can get it on your website, patrickkilpatrick.com. Is it available in all get, bookstores? Uh, Amazon, Amazon.com, all forms, narrated version, the audible, the paperback, hardcover, Kindle. Uh, Barnes & Noble, same thing. Um, if they can't get to one of our signings, and I'll be at Barnes and Nobles and Burbank Center uh, Friday night, uh, but we've been around the country, and they want an autographed copy, they can go to patrickkilpatrick.com. Uh, Kilpatrick with one L. So, um, and we'll get them out a, an autographed copy as well. Do a book signing in Palm Springs. It's packed with people. You know, I'm now. supposed to come to uh, to Coral now, Palm Springs, Florida. Right? No, 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 Palm, Palm Springs, Springs we're, California. We're Palm Springs, California. Oh, yeah. I, I, well, I, I definitely will get down there. Uh, because I'm come now, it's loaded table. with people. We're, we're overrun with people right now. Do you all know Gloria Cassell Hollis? Gloria? I don't know if we do or not. We've only lived here a year. No, but, but I've been, I lived here for years. Like a, uh, a very dear friend, and she lives down there a lot of times. But I'll get down there. I will. I, I love will it. Indeed. So let's ask you a hypothetical question, because you've already worked with some of the biggest people on the planet. Uh, uh, who's on your bucket list of like people that you haven't had an opportunity to work with yet that you would love to work with, guy and girl? Well, I think more and more about, about the project rather than the actual people involved. But I think Kate Blanchett, actress. Uh, yes, I'd Jerry. Love to work, work with her. Um, I. Uh, uh, who else? Guy. I mean, I like Christian Bale's work a lot. Yeah, um, he's good. Yeah, I, I like transformational actors. Um, now, that's not to say that icons who just play one uh, right. thing, sort of like the Gary Cooper kind of thing, um, right. aren't aren't of interest too. But uh, I, I really do appreciate. And also, if some guy if somewhere along the line, people they've had some sort of stage connection. Uh, right. That's all, always uh, it, it usually means they're a particular kind of an actor. Um, yeah, Cary Grant always played Cary Grant. He never acted. Yeah, he I was mean, Cary it's a Grant. great, great icon and wonderful mm -hmm. light comedy and all of that. But, uh, you know, I've always been interested in um, people like, I mean, I think he's lost his mind, but De Niro. Um, uh, and Sean Penn in, in his in, in, when he's doing really fine work. Those are the kind of actors that I gravitate towards and love working with. Um, uh, there are a lot of projects that I'd like to be involved with, and there's a lot of projects that uh, a lot of books, uh, the prey novels. Um, I, I like to read, but. The Prey novels are about a Minneapolis police officer who always hunts serial killers. They're brilliant books. They're written by a guy named John Sanford. I'd love to be involved in those. They're, unfortunately, they're in a bankruptcy proceeding with MGM a lot, but um, uh, there are a lot of things. I'm just looking for really interesting projects. It doesn't matter whether they're big or small because I've gotten wonderful things out of 
all, all scale projects but um uh really cool things acting becomes a bore after a while if you're doing the same shit over and over again like playing the same character it's so nice well, I, i've never have done that even playing villains and that's there you just touched upon what the chief challenge is i mean i've had probably 10 television shows i've done 80 of them but 10 of them that they were repeating the same dialogue i'd already said so the, the challenge became how do I take this moment in cinematic time? How do I take this set of circumstances in the world and create a new guy? And there's a way to do that. Um, uh, and that becomes the challenge there. But that's um, when acting becomes exciting. When you can turn it around and make it not what has been done a million times, sure. that's the magic of acting. I do a lot of teaching of young people and, and um uh, what we're aiming for is trans transformational acting, Absolutely. and we're aiming to get getting them working as fast as possible. Uh, uh, I don't think that's taught in a lot of schools. No, my next movie I want to do, I'm going to play a 20 year old gorgeous woman with big tits. <laughs> but we have the technology. <laughs> so, CGI. Uh, I, by the way, CGI. I did, I did a nip talk. I did a Nip Tuck episode, and um, my character, a lifer in prison, <clears throat> wanted Christian uh, Julian, um, the actor, um, he, 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 I wanted him, plastic surgeon, to augment his son, who was my cell uh, bitch, uh, with a set I remember of, that. Uh, I love Nip Tuck. Tips. I love it. Well, I, they actually yeah. built an apparatus that showed um the the young character john helmsley with the uh the, the breast so yeah we can we can implement your desire <laughs> all right so here here's what we got to do everybody this is patrick kilpatrick you can go to patrick kilpatrick.com you can follow him on twitter i'm pat kilpatrick uh, follow him in social media we want to thank you for coming on the show because we're out of time uh but anytime thank you, you guys. Call, let God us know bless. we had a great time pat, thank it you was so a lot much of fun pat back again I'll one give day. you a call when i'm down in palm springs absolutely you got it baby thanks bye-bye good, good to you. had a good time with you bye. you're a lot of fun all right nice everybody guy. thanks thank so you. much you for nice guy. hey everybody thanks so much for tuning, tuning in. in we'll be back next week sorry for our technical difficulties we'll get them all worked out uh scott d thank you so much and everybody we'll see you next week see bye. you next week bye-bye everybody bye everybody Woo. Woo. Thank <laughs> you.